Hey there, welcome. My name is Dana Damara. Welcome to AstroCast. Welcome to your full moon report. Lovely, lovely full moon. Um, I want to begin by saying thank you. Thank you so much for continuing to uh, tune in and listen to these. Uh, if you haven't already joined the full moon circle, I uh, record these a few days before and hopefully you can watch them before our circle. And this week I'm leading our full moon circle on Thursday night. It is virtual, so anyone can attend. It's Thursday night at 6 p.m. You can register at danadamarayoga.com. Uh, and, you know, at the full moon circle, it's really great because we all, it's a Zoom call and we all, I know we're all Zoomed out, but it's really sweet for um, everybody from all over the world to come together and just pause and set some special intentions for the full moon. So I wanna say thank you for being here and listening. And thank you to those of you who uh, so uh, graciously join the full moon circle. So I wanna go ahead and begin. And I wanna start by saying this, um, the energy that we're moving through in 2021 is obviously a bit softer than 2020, very obvious. Uh, at the same time, we still have Saturn and Uranus kind of making things, um, bringing things to a head. Like if there's something that you haven't really dealt with yet, whatever it is, I have no idea what you have going on, but Saturn and Uranus will kind of go, hey, what about this? Hey, hey, Saturn is restriction and um, structures and systems, right? And Uranus is exploration, higher mind, um, this whole idea of, uh, I don't like to say break down and break up, but Uranus breaks down and breaks up things that aren't working anymore and gives us those flashes of insight to create new systems and structures. So we're going to have that theme all year. And um, it's going to be subtle at some times and poignant at others. So just be aware when things like repetitive um, situations are showing up for you that have kind of the same theme, but maybe there's different players involved. <laughs> uh, so I just want to put that out there um, for you. Uh, okay, so we're moving into the full moon here and the full moon is March 28th at, uh, without looking down, 11.48 a.m. on Sunday Pacific Standard Time. And I want to share the screen with you, but something I want to say about this full moon is it's sitting right with, the sun is sitting right with um, Venus, and uh, it's just a beautiful, I'm, I'm going to show you the screen is what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you the screen, and then we'll go through it. And I like to share my screen so that those of you who are like, oh my gosh, I look at this screen, it makes no sense to me. Um, it, it's not super hard to understand uh, and I have a half analytical mind and a half intuitive mind. So this kind of thing appeases my mathematical mind because I can see lots of shapes. <laughs> uh, and it also is lovely to drop into my intuition. So what I wanna share with you is right here. See this, this is Aries and this is the sun. And this is, oh, better put my glasses on. And oh, there we go, Chiron and Venus. And then straight across is the moon. So we have a full moon in Libra, okay? It's full moon in Libra, which, first of all, is all about balance. Libra is about relationship. Libra is about balance. Libra wants, um, you know, Libra wants things to be in balance. And Libras tend to look for that balance where things are out of balance. Libras will try to bring things into um, a sense of harmony. Libra wants harmony, right? So it's kind of the overarching theme of this full moon. But you know, the other thing I want to say is, is this is a really amazing um, aspect right here. Venus is love, abundance, um, romantic love, self-love, intuition, beauty, um, what you value, what you hold true. And that's what this, this represents. And then if you look right next to it, it's Chiron. And Chiron is the healer. Chiron is the um, sacred warrior. So Chiron is all about healing. Chiron wants you to heal in this lifetime. And it's sitting right next to the sun. Now, something I want to point out is I, I'm not just an astrologist. I also uh, like to play around with uh, numerology. And I just want to say that if you notice, all of those uh, planets are at eight degrees. Okay. Now, eight degrees, the number eight 
is a pretty powerful number. It's infinity. It represents abundance. It's um, it's it's a it's a number that's uh, I well, that's actually my favorite number. It's in it's in many things in my life. My birthday. My well, I'm not going to tell you what else because then you might. Anyways, <laughs> eight is one of my favorite numbers. Okay, and we have a quadruple code. So we've got all these planets at eight. So whatever it is that you are releasing or healing will guide you to an idea or a feeling of abundance. It's not going to create it for you because creating abundance is a, a phrase that I'll use every now and again, but it's really about feeling what abundance feels like. And remember, value, love, um, beauty. It's all, Venus is also about your finances. Chiron is healing. So this is all through healing. The sun will illuminate all of that. And then the moon, all at eight. Now, the other thing I want to uh, point out here, where is it? Where are we? There we go. Okay, so see this, Uranus? Doo, 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 doo. Uranus is also at eight degrees. So Uranus is sitting in Taurus, will be for a little while here. Uranus is about breakthrough, breakdown, breakup, right? Kind of flashes of insight. Taurus is home, hearth, you know, your home situation. So there's another degree of eight, okay? So with, with just overall, because of the eight, this full moon is really um, designed to support you in overcoming some challenges or some obstacles, allowing yourself to um, come up with new ideas and new ways to move through uh, whatever it is that maybe you were dealing with in 2020, whatever it is that you're dealing with now, any kind of challenge that you have been sitting with that keeps recurring and you're starting to notice it and you're like, holy crud, drat, this is a, this is a recurring theme. This is all giving you the tools and the preparation that you need to really say, okay, I'm kind of done with this. I have this brand new idea of how I'm gonna handle this and this is how it's gonna roll. So I also wanna say this, and I'm, I'm kind of jumping around, but don't worry, I'll come back. This right here, this is Mars. So if you see Mars, Mars is also, it's at 14 degrees Gemini. And so, and it's sitting right next to North Node and I'll go over that in a minute, but Mars is also a, a little bit of a player here. And Mars is, I don't wanna say trying because it's six degrees out, you know, and it's like square, it's a sextile, but it's again, six degrees out, but it's close enough to make note, okay? And Mars is the initiator. Mars is like, take back your power, man. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Reclaim like your seat at the table. And so this um, the energy of Mars is slightly aggressive, assertive, if you will. But use it instead as like this willpower that you need or desire to kind of get you through that hump of, okay, yeah, I want to take my seat. Oh yeah, that's right. I, this is what's important to me. And also, you know, it, it's, it's important to, to do that with love and with compassion um, and with grace because Mars kind of out of control is um, mean. <laughs> Mars is kind of like bossy. Mars is like, just do it already. And sometimes that's not exactly what we need, but sometimes it is. So only you know what, how much Mars you want to infuse into this um, full moon. But I will say this, allow Mars to kind of feed your, um, your, I don't know the, uh, your purpose, allow Mars to feed your purpose and then allow Venus to soften it. So if you're, trying to give something up, or if you're trying to release something, like if you've got a hold of it really hard, like, yeah, but if I let go of this, then blah, 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 whatever the story is, you know, uh, kind of allow Venus to go, just open the hand and let Mars kind of push through a little bit, 
if that makes sense. So we have this really epic energy and opportunity to heal individually and collectively. And we need to be a little, a little forceful, a little authoritative. Don't get caught up in the emotions because emotions will just derail you and you'll go off into that old pattern, whatever it is again. But if you stay the course of this is um, where I can, I can connect earth to a heart, to the divine, golden. And I know you know whatever your little issue is or whatever it is that you're working on because if you're listening to this, there's some desire to search for something more than the mundane issue. You know that there's a bigger um, orchestra at play, if you will. So this full moon is really powerful. Um, I want to go back. I'm going to share my screen again. Okay. Um, so I want to just go back for a moment uh, because there's another, a couple other little things here I want to talk about. And um, let's see, let me see if I missed anything. Oh, one thing I want to say uh, too is this has been a super potent time. Here, let me stop share for a second. <laughs> this has been a super potent time. So we had the new moon in Pisces. And if you missed that recording, I would go back to it if I were you. And I would listen to that recording because every new moon we have um, kind of a theme of where to set intentions, right? And this new moon was in Pisces, which is the very last sign of the zodiac. So it's like we just finished up a cycle, right? So now we have, after that, a week later, we had the equinox. So we had the um, spring equinox, uh, you know, beautiful, beautiful energy, starting new, cleansing out the old, detoxifying, you know, now we're going to start entering into more light, right? In some places on the planet, people are like, oh my God, so excited. We're going to go out and do all the things. So that's great. Then now we have our followed right by that is this full moon. Okay. And so it's super, it's been a super potent time. So I went and started a cleanse on the new moon and I decided to just keep going through the full moon because I feel like it's almost like we're, if you ever watch Star Trek, <laughs> those, like you line yourself up and they would like beam away. <laughs> That's kind of this energy and it will allow you to stay grounded in this human body. But, you know, maybe your dreams will get a little bit more vivid. You'll be able to see things from a higher perspective. This time is super potent is one thing I want to say. And I forgot to mention that. Um, and so with the new Zodiac wheel starting, the full moon, this full moon in particular is really helping us drop all the things that maybe we've been carrying since, you know, last equinox, March 2020. And we all know what was going on in March 2020. It was really hard and challenging for a lot of people. Um, and so if we, if we go back to March 2020, we're starting to see like, wow, what a trajectory. What have we learned? How have we grown? Where have we evolved to a place of seeing things from a different perspective? What opportunities have you had to sit with yourself, right? Sit with who you are, how you show up, how you don't show up, all the things that are really aimed at not making us feel bad, but allowing us to um, like Maya Angelou says, right? This is one of my favorite quotes by her. She said, um, well, now I know better. So now I can do better, right? We don't try to be perfect, but we try to move through uh, life in a way that is supportive of growth, right? So that's really this, this energy. Um, okay, now I'm going to share my screen because I have some other things that are just overarching that I want to go over. And I want to talk a little bit about the Grand Trine. Um, okay, so I want to show you some things. So Saturn is in Aquarius. Uh, Saturn will be in Aquarius for a while. So those of you who have Saturn in Aquarius in your birth chart, you are going through your Saturn return. If you're like, what's that? Maybe you should reach out to me and I can help you uh, talk about that. The other thing I want to talk about is Jupiter in Aquarius. Okay, so Jupiter in Aquarius, you know, remember Saturn is restrictions, rules, systems, karma, time, right? So systems, 
Okay. Now Jupiter in Aquarius and Aquarius is all about the people being ruled by humanity, being ruled by the people instead of that top down hierarchy structure. Right? So if you notice a lot of our systems that we have relied upon as humans are crumbling little by little, they're just like, but wait a minute. Okay. Maybe we can do this now. And, you know, and, and they're trying to adjust. We all are. Okay. That's where the compassion comes in. Right. But because Jupiter is also in Aquarius, Jupiter is about expansion. There will be new precedences set up while Jupiter and Saturn are in Aquarius. So we'll be able to um, come up with new ways of functioning as a world, as humanity that will stay. So those innovative ideas, these new ways of doing things, it's, it's really a beautiful time. If you have a new idea to start something and you feel like it could support how you or your family function or how the whole world functions, put it out there. Now is the time to put those new ideas out there. Um, and then I also want to say this. So North Node is in Gemini sitting next to Mars. And I want to make a special point here because this is part of what I want to talk about. We have Saturn and Mars and then the moon making this triangle. So we'll talk about that in a second too. Um, so Gemini's fast, air sign, right? And then you have uh, Mars. So remember I said Mars is the initiator. Mars is going to want you to move really fast. Just take breaths before you make huge decisions. Really meditate, think, journal, seek out counsel, you know, take some time. Don't act too quickly. Make sure just all your I's and T's, uh, I's are dotted and T's are crossed. Um, and then I talked a little bit about Uranus and Taurus. I just, I want you to be aware that Uranus is going to be there from till 2026. And, uh, you know, this is, really asking us to tune into nature is really what it is. Okay, let's see. I have all these notes I'm looking at making sure and sometimes I can't even read them. I don't even know what they say, just scribbly, scribbly. Okay, I talked a little bit about Venus, Chiron, and uh, the sun, all in the sign of Aries. Super beautiful time to connect with nature, to connect with the ones you love, to um, surround yourself with beauty, to really seek out healing time for yourself. Like, just say no and take 15 minutes to go and meditate somewhere or laugh, whatever it is that makes you laugh. Like, just be in that higher vibratory frequency. Um, uh, it, it's also a time to um, express forgiveness, um, compassion, and a sense of humility. You know, again, it goes back to that quote by Maya Angelou, right? now that I know better, I'm going to do better. Not like making up excuses for the things that we did differently a year ago or five or 10 or however many years ago, last hour, <laughs> but instead saying, okay, I understand from a higher perspective. Now I'm going to do better. It's really allowing you to heal and others to heal around you. So just be aware of that because um, everybody I try to remember this. Everybody's just trying to do their best. Everybody is just trying to do their best. Um, we can just be, well, kinder to each other. I think it would really um, help. Um, okay, let me see what else. Okay, this is what I want to talk about, this grand trine. So a grand trine happens when we have these planets making a triangle. See this from Saturn over to Mars down to the moon. And it's in the same, um, it's in the same element. So this is an air. So we have a grand trine. So those are some pretty harsh, Saturn and, and Mars are really harsh planets. They're like, very masculine, you know? <laughs> and the moon is like very feminine. She is the feminine. She's like, hey guys, just chill out. You know, so this, this grand trine um, is really positive. Like if you had, um, say like, if you had, say, uh, Pluto, Jupiter, uh, I mean, Pluto, Mars, and Saturn in fire signs, this would be completely different. Now we're talking, you know, Saturn, Mars, and the moon in air signs. So it's like, it's got this stable balance at the bottom of the triangle of firmness, system, structure, you know, 
um, assertiveness, groundedness, initiation. Apex is the moon, emotions, love. So Mars and in, in Mars and Saturn can be pretty intense, singularly and combined. But in this formation with the moon at the top, it actually takes on a softer gaze. So it takes on more like motivation, dedication, um, perseverance, willpower, um, longevity. So those ideas that you might have or the decisions that you make, think them through because and, and it, well, two things. One is think them through. I'm going to stop share. So one is think them through so that you're making these decisions from a super grounded place and not going into old patterns. And then the other thing is move through, like when you're feeling that, like, uh, uh, this same story, you know, like that, when you're feeling that, ask yourself. And when I say self, I don't mean this self. I mean this self in the heart and this self in the gut. Don't ask this self because this self is going to lead you down the same road you've been on forever. These two points are going to go, well, let's just feel into this instead of let's think about this. So ask yourself, you know, what do I need to do to move past this? You know, from a compassionate, loving, strong way, right? So being firm and authoritative with this massive open heart, but don't give it away. Don't give it away. Okay. That's my, my uh, thing. So uh, the other thing I want to say is I'm going to share my screen one more time because this is important. So wherever your North node is, this is the North node. The North node will tell you the uh, patterns that you continually run up against in your lifetime. So if you know your North node and then you kind of look back or you even look in the present moment and you go, I'm having this issue with this thing. Um, I would bet money that it has to do with your North node. So when you know that and you run into these same walls or the same grippings or the same things, you can go, Oh yeah. Okay. It's one of my karmic lessons. Okay. I don't want to go into that loop again. <sighs> How can I move through this with strength, with willpower, with dedication to myself and the sense of like compassion, right? So grand trines, this grand trine will allow you to do that. Not only will this grand trine bring up those issues, like a it'll also give you the opportunity to take flight away from them if you pay attention, okay? So it's, it's this full moon grand trine really is, is a sign that whatever hardship, whatever issue you've been, or struggle that, that you've been facing, it will pass. Especially if you're taking positive, um, true action, or if you're using your inner strength to overcome something from a source of wisdom, right? If you're like, wait a minute, this is, I've seen this before, hang on, right? I don't wanna hurt anyone, and I have to stand up for myself, something like that. Okay, this is that time where you can ground in. So if you're looking for a solution to something like that at this time, know that hopefully it will come up with a sense of ease. And if there's a struggle, it will allow you to kind of move through it. Okay, so you don't have to force anything, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, it's Mars, Saturn, and the moon also is like, this um yay you you've worked so hard <laughs> here comes your rewards you know so um I, I could share exactly how this is showing up for me but i won't <laughs> but i will say this try not to allow emotions to get into those things that are showing up like really be in a place of um discernment and uh understanding that there's this divine order to life and Everything that comes across your plate is meant for you to learn and to grow and to evolve from. So, and to be nice with yourself and other people. <laughs> so just allow yourself to feel into this full moon. And, and when we release with this full moon, the release really is about letting go of, of the grips, the patterns, so that we can be lighter, so that we can serve truly so that you can like get to that pit of what it is that you're truly meant 
to be. And it's not like what you were doing before this moment in time was wrong. It was perfect. Now you're just uh, a layer lighter. <laughs> so, and I hope that helps. Uh, I really hope it helps. Again, uh, virtual full moon circles for now. I'm sure in the next few months, I will be able to hold uh, a full moon circle in person. But for now, we're doing it virtual. And that is this Thursday at 6 p.m. I will be recording from uh, San Francisco slash Marin County, California, as I'm going up there to uh, play and practice this coming up weekend. Um, that's where I'll be in the full moon. So I'll also be teaching a full moon flow on Saturday night. So if you're in the San Francisco Bay Area and you want to come to my class, just go to my website. You'll see it all there. Um, and if you want your chart read, give me a ringling. Well, don't give me a call because I don't put my phone over here. Just shoot me an email. Uh, all that information is in the description. You can just go to my website, danademaro.com anytime. And I would love to support you. It's so awesome to look at your chart and and see kind of where things are falling in comparison to your natal chart and then when you look back or you look at like things that are going on it, it's like this oh yeah <laughs> and then we remember that we're just this little minuscule little piece of dust on a huge planet and that everything ebbs and flows and we can kind of get out of that like, oh my gosh, what's happening to, okay, now what, right? I know it's not that easy, trust me. I know we all fall into our old stuff, I, myself included, and that's why we surround ourselves with like such epic people that can support us during challenging times. And if you need that support, please reach out to me. Uh, I hope I see you at the Full Moon Circle. If I don't, I hope I see you somewhere on this path. Uh, please reach out anytime. In the meantime, mwah, happy full moon. Take care.